All right, uh, let's uh, look at uh, the changes to the National Cabinet. Uh, we promised you that we will uh, unpack some of these changes, uh, quite sweeping. Let's start with the Department of Communications and Digital Technologies. Uh, that is the overarching name for this department, under new leadership again. So Stella Ndabeni Abrahams has been the minister since uh, 2014. She's been moved to the Small Business Department, and her replacement, Kumbudzo Nchabeni. And of course, this is very important in terms of ICT, in terms of digital migration, uh, in terms of millions of South Africans needing access to digital services to get jobs, uh, to be more productive, uh, things like that. Uh, let's speak now to Leon Lowe, who's the executive director of the Free Market Foundation. Uh, Mr. Lowe, I, th I think there's been something of a uh, revolving door. Uh, somebody quoted 11 ministers in a period of 12 years. Of course, the communications department has had different names um, but given the the importance of some of the projects that have been delayed like digital migration is is the sheer number of changes over the years a problem for you yes thank you to you and the viewers and uh, <clears throat> let me just start by making the observation that our digital and telecommunications what most people would call cell phone networks and operation in South Africa is probably the single greatest success story since 1994 in the new South Africa. There are more active cell phones than there are people, meaning many have everyone who wants one's got one. Uh, this is probably one of the most important portfolios and one of the most important aspects and one of the greatest accomplishments in the new South Africa. And so she is faced with an extraordinary challenge and probably more important than almost any other challenge, perhaps alongside uh, health and others. This is big and it's difficult and it's been an unbelievable mess, a revolving door of nearly one minister per year and, uh, and, and no deadlines met. Uh, the CEO of Telcom has just resigned and said it essentially was impossible to operate under this environment. So we need, uh, to, 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 I don't want to be too technical, but basically wavelengths or spectrum uh, have been bottled up in the government and wasted. Uh, and the result of that is that the network operators, the, the big and small, have had to do what's called re-farming of their towers or their base stations uh, that broadcast uh, cell phone and other um, um, information. Um, and including uh, the, this discussion you and I are having right now goes over that. And uh, there were deadlines that were simply not met for many years for so-called digital migration so that you and I are now talking with very old technology, analog, it should be new. And one of the ways, by the way, for SABC to would have done this long, long ago, if you were simply given ownership of your spectrum so that you could trade it and share it and use the revenue to modernize. So that's one of her challenges. She must get the spectrum out, the wavelengths. That will bring down prices, make telecommunications accessible to the poor and people in remote areas, and bring about modernization so we can start having, you know, uh, wireless-driven cars and we can start having uh, uh, robotic surgery and all of the modern things in the modern world, which we are denied because we are sitting with a Neanderthal system and with spectrum that is not allocated. Yeah. Having said uh, that, can, can I, I just stop need you to because the, the whole spectrum issue uh, is potentially oh. very politically fraught. So we know that the the big players want spectrum, MTN and Vodacom and, and Telcom, they all want spectrum and they say they deserve it because they've invested a lot in infrastructure. Uh, but then there's an the argument, give it to other new players, let them compete in, in telecoms. Uh, we've seen how fraught it was already, just looking at um, set top boxes would they be encrypted or, or not <laughs> so, so this is very um, challenging and and it should not be uh, steered by political interests at all yes or by corporate interests it should be steered by consumer interests and you know there's a, a big huff and a puff about the so-called tier two operators of the duopoly the two big ones Vodacom and MTN but, but it's really bizarre. The government gave them a license, created this duopoly. They did a fantastic job of getting telecommunications to everyone. They should have monuments built to them for what they've accomplished, despite the government setting them up for failure and, and for um, 
so-called collusion, which they there's no evidence that they've done. So what should happen now is, firstly, they should not be penalised for what they've achieved, and it wasn't their fault that they were the only two. They were the government's fault. Now there are six and maybe seven with a new government operator. So there are now many operators in South Africa, and all of them should be given the same bite at the cherry. There should be a level playing field of auction of all of the spectrum. There's a huge amount. Everyone should be able to get some. And there are differences between the 900 and 800 megahertz band and so on. It gets a bit technical. Let's not worry. But to get the spectrum that you can do in rural areas and in cities and efficiently and, and yeah. cheaply, the government has been sitting on this. It's been collecting dust and and been in mothballs. It must now be released and it must be tradable. People must be free to do deals, to share, uh, to to sell and buy and invest in. It must become a yeah. form of capital okay, in Ms. the economy. Mr. Leon, yeah. uh, does uh, Kombutso and Chaveni have the CV, uh, have the experience to get this done now? Yes, there's, there's little known about her, uh, at least that I've been able to find. She is highly qualified academically. She has a business degree. She has two, she has three degrees. She has experience in IT and, and telecommunications, not, not a lot. Uh, but she comes in, I presume, with without. She's, she's been very careful about not treading on other people's turf in government. So she said very little about this portfolio. I assure uh, myself that she has strong views, and I'm very optimistic that she will be open to, to reason. She's shown herself to be a very competent administrator, and that's what the department needs. We need to get the spectrum out. She hits, needs to hit the ground running and probably the most important job in South Africa, second to the president. Did uh, Stella Ndabeni Abrams fail in this portfolio because she's been moved to another ministry? Yes, she failed and, and those under her failed, her department, uh, the, the Spectrum uh, ICASA, the government agency that allocates wavelengths and spectrum, failed. And that is why we are now sitting in a situation where nobody knows in the industry who's got spectrum, who doesn't. There was free spectrum issued with COVID, but they were never told when they would get it back or what would happen to it. So there was no ability to make the billions of rands of investment to use the spectrum efficiently. But the most important thing she should do is forget about the industry, forget about politics, forget about government, keep her eye singly focused on the needs and interests of consumers, which is to make all the wavelengths and spectrum available to the operators and people like you, the broadcasters, so that we can bring down prices and improve efficiency and, and join the modern world, which depends entirely on the efficient use of wavelengths today. It yeah. is a, a completely new world and she must get us into it. Yeah, bring it on. Thank you very much. Uh, Leon Lowe, Executive Director of the Free Market Foundation. We take a short break. Lots more to come. We'll look at some of the ministers uh, with a cloud hanging over there.